is Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Do you dig my cool earrings? They are made from resin. And today I'm going to tell you um, all about polyester resin because when I started this craft, I was very confused and intimidated and I almost didn't even try it because I was kind of scared of it. Um, there are a lot of tutorials out there for epoxy resin, but I couldn't find anything for polyester resin uh, that it was geared towards a crafter. So here I am. I'm going to uh, share with you what I've learned over these past few weeks working with polyester resin. I am not an expert. I'm not a scientist. I am a crafter and an artist and um, so what I've learned here is been from my personal experience and um, if you are a scientist or you know more about this than I do and you want to um, leave a comment and clarify anything please do I that's awesome be nice um, but yeah if you can help out uh, anybody else working with this it's awesome leave a comment um, okay so first of all I'm going to show you what I bought this is cast and craft clear polyester casting resin. This is a quart. I started off with a pint and um, I bought it with a 50% off coupon at AC Moore probably about eight months ago and um, then I started reading about it and I got really nervous about using it. I was worried about the fumes. I was worried about my studio being too cold to use it. Um, I was worried about it not curing right for the jewelry that I wanted to make. I was afraid I got the wrong kind of resin. So I felt very intimidated going into the, the uh, process. But then I decided, well, I already bought and paid for it. I've had it for six months already, so I can't return it. I wouldn't feel right about it anyway because if the shelf life was only six months on this, I wouldn't want to put somebody else through an unsuccessful experience because, you know, it was old resin. So I decided I was just going to try it because, hey, I already have it. Might as well. All right, so when you get it, this is the resin. This is um, a can, and when you take the lid off the first time, there'll be a little metal insert that you'll need to pull off with a pair of pliers. So after you've used it the first time, um, wipe the threads, put a piece of wax paper down there before you put the cap on so you'll be able to get the cap off again. Even though this is just the resin with no catalyst, it still will glue that cap on. So you'll need to use like some kitchen um, lid removers if you don't do that. So not a big deal, but save yourself the hassle. Um, you also get a little container of catalyst and um, you will use different drops um, per ounce of resin depending on how thick your piece to cast is going to be and your environmental conditions. So on the back of the container there's a little chart and it tells you how much catalyst to use um, depending on how thick your thing is and it's going by um, the temperature being 70 degrees in your room where you're working. So if it's hotter and drier, you can use less catalyst. If it's cooler and damper, you'll need more catalyst. So that's an important thing to remember. If you cast a bunch of stuff and it doesn't cure properly or is sticky after a few days, you need more catalyst in your next batch. But you can save it. As long as it's hard and it's, it's cured, you can glaze over it with some... Future Floor Wax. This is, uh, I don't even think it says Future anymore. Um, it says Pledge Floor Wax. Um, it used to say with Future Shine, and this is a couple years old. I don't think it even says that anymore, but it's a Pledge Floor Wax. It's basically a really thin acrylic varnish. So um, let me show you my first experiments with this. Put this back all together. Um, and I would recommend using coupon at your big box craft store to buy this because I think this Eddie Seymour with a catalyst was about $37, so I used a 50% off coupon and got it for $18. So, big significant savings, but you can make tons of stuff with one bottle of resin. Um, so, what was I going to show you? Oh, the stuff you need for resin. You want some rubber gloves. I've got these at the dollar store. There was four uh, sets for a buck. Um, resin is very sticky. That's the thing. It's just really sticky, so you don't want it on your hands. It's very hard to wash off. Um, cover your work surface with wax paper or a silicone mat. Try to be careful when you pour it because cleaning it up isn't fun. So that's why you want the wax paper. You can toss it away when you're done. You'll need mold release if you're going to use molds. And um, I really like the molds that are made for resin because they're really slick and glossy and um, you, they come the, when you take the pieces out, they come out really clear and shiny. Um, you can also use silicone molds. These are some Martha Stewart ones here. They work just fine, but you'll have more of a matte finish on them, and sometimes they can feel a little tacky when they're done. And I think it's just because of the texture of the mold. Um, but to fix that, you simply go over it with um, a little of your floor wax. And this is a pe one little thing that I glazed, and um, it made it a little bit shinier because it was very matte and dull looking after coming out of the silicone mold. All right, so I live in Maine. In the summer, it is hot, but it is damp. In the winter, it is dry, but it is cold. And my studio is not heated, so I need more catalyst than you generally 
would need if you were working in a hot dry area. Um, so I found instead of 15 drops per ounce for a thin casting, I needed 20. So you'll have to play with that a little bit depending on your conditions. So you may be thinking, Lindsay, why don't I just add extra drops? I mean, what's that going to harm? Extra drops of catalyst will make it cure too quickly. So you might actually be stirring it in the little pot, mixing it up, and it gets hard and jelly before you even get a chance to pour it. Or maybe you're pouring a bunch at once and you're going to add in, uh, embedments and you've already your resin's already starting to you know get hard and jelly on you. So that's you know that's the big reason. It's just gonna shorten the open time or the time you have to work with it. So it's just it's a it's a balance and you'll get the feel of it. It's not that hard. It's, just, it's like cooking. It's like making bread. You know, sometimes you need to add a few like spoonfuls of water to the dough to make it stick together. Sometimes you need a, full, a few spoonfuls of flour to make your dough stick together. It's, it's very much like making bread. That's the best way I can describe it. Okay, what else do you need? You will need a container to mix in, but instead of buying the expensive containers, I recommend you save applesauce cups and pudding cups and mic out marks for uh, measurements. So uh, using a little math, my husband and I figured out that two tablespoons was one ounce, at least the tablespoons we have at home. So what we did was we took two tablespoons of water and put it in the little applesauce cup and I drew a line around it at that level. Then I added two more tablespoons, put another line. Then two more tablespoons, put another line. So I have marks for one, two, and three ounces on this cup. And I just make out a bunch all at once, dry them off, and then they're ready to use. And I just mark the outside of the cup with a sharpie. Um, so pudding cups and applesauce cups are great for that. And then when they get too icky and you don't want to reuse them, you can just chuck them and go back to the recycling bin and get some more. So don't spend money on the expensive ones. At least I don't think you should. I think you should make your own and spend more money on the resin. You can put lots of stuff in your resin. Um, the thing is, the thing about resin, okay, remember how I said that moisture affects how your resin sets? So if you want to color your resin, like, um, oh, here's something that I made that I'm kind of proud of. I made this yesterday. I think it's pretty. Um, this is one of the first things that I cast was this frame. Um, so if you want to color your resin, you have a lot of options. I used acrylic paint and Perlex for this, so I got kind of a jade look to it. Um, that worked out really well. I've also used um, dye-based reinker, and that's what I did this with here, this uh, little kind of translucent peach rose. Um, those both work well, but if you're adding more moisture, you're going to need like an extra drop or two of Catalyst to compensate for that. Um, they do make specialty pigments you can buy for your resin. Of course, they're about $5 for a little tube versus what you already have on hand. So I say try what you have on hand first. Um, but I also like using the resin clear a lot. So I probably will do more of that than coloring it. Um, you could also use tempera paint. I'm going to be um, experimenting with dry tempera powder in my next batch of resin. So I'll let you know how that turns out on my blog, thefrugalcrafter.wordpress.com. And you can look under the video on YouTube for a link to that blog if you want. Um, so those all work, and you know I think pretty much any sort of water-based uh, medium will work with your resin. You don't want anything too watery though. So like I use the Liquitex Heavy Body Paint because it doesn't have a lot of water in it, and I colored um, a bunch of resin, and it turned out really well. Um, so things that you want might want to add into your resin. These are some little charms. I did buttons and glitter. So those will be post-back earrings or clip-on earrings. I'm not 100% sure which yet. Um, you can add sea glass. Here's some sea glass pendants that I just made. Now these are about a quarter inch thick. So I think I probably had about 10 or 15 drops of catalyst per ounce of the resin I used for these. We'll take a gander at these. These paperweights are about three quarters of an inch thick. It only took me five drops of catalyst in an ounce to cure this. And it cured really fast because the more resin you have like in a mold, the more heat it makes. So that heat that it makes makes it cure quicker. So, um, so it's funny, the bigger thing, the bigger the thing you're going to cast, the least, the less amount of catalyst you need, which is kind of counterintuitive, but, but it works. Okay. I'm going to tell you, explain my casting process because, um, resin, polyester resin is very stinky. So I'm in my studio, my basement. I have a fan over there. I have a fan over there pointing towards the bulkhead and the bulkhead doors open. So I have a constant stream of air being circulated through. Um, I pour all my resin inside, but I take it outside to cast it. And what I do is I put a big piece of plexiglass down on a table out back. I put all my molds down on that piece of plexiglass. And then I put a Rubbermaid container on top of that 
face down kind of to dome it and that does two things it protects my resin from any dust or leaves or anything else that might get blown into it and also protects it in case there's you know a breeze from my bolts blowing around um it also, since it's a frosted clear plastic container, it also lets the sunlight in and traps the heat, so it makes it cure a little bit better. Um, I found, I did have, let me show you these, um, these are one of the first things I made, these little bottle cap rings, and um, they were sticky forever. I just couldn't figure out, I cast them inside, and I left them inside to cure, and they just were not hardening up. And so, last ditch effort, I took them outside, and I set them on the picnic table in bright sun, and that did the trick. I think there's something, um, between the heat of the sun and the UV rays that help cast the polyester resin. Um, that's just my beginner observation finding, um, but it, it works and it doesn't hurt and I haven't had any tacky resin since I've been putting it outside to cast. So outside in a nice dry sunny day, great place for casting resin and it keeps the stink out of your basement. That first uh, weekend when I cast the resin, it was awful. It smelled bad. I didn't want my kids anywhere near it because the fumes I knew were not good. Um, and you could smell it upstairs. It was bad. So when I cast it down here and then take it outside to cure, um, it almost eliminates the fumes. It's so much better. So after you're done resin, you, you've either you've made some things in molds and you've um, you've gotten them all done, you're probably trying to figure out what am I going to do with these now. Uh, one thing you can do is you can glue bales on the back. I use um, Gorilla two-part epoxy for that. Um, but you could also use E6000. Those glues will all work just fine. Um, you could wire wrap. Here's a little resin um, cabochon I made, and I just I rolled up a piece of uh, book paper in there, and then I just wire wrapped it with wire when it was done. And that's just a very elegant little treatment. And I also left a little loop on the bottom so that I could dangle some stuff from it as well. So that's another way you could finish it off. Uh, here, just an example of how. I just glued on a post back on that earring so I could make, you know, some simple post earrings. Um, here, I actually made a little spiral of wire, I hope that shows up, and I uh, glued it to the back of the sea glass pendant, Oops, and I made sure I had a little loop on the top, and then I just added a um, the earring finding to that. So there's some easy ways to finish off your resin jewelry. And I mean, you can even get fancy with some more wire wrapping and dangles like I did with uh, these hoops here. So, you know, you can finish them off however you like. Um, other things to embed which are fun, here I have some, I have buttons and paper together on this one. I hope that shows up good in the video. I can't really tell, my monitor goes into power saving mode and I can't really tell. Um, and this is kind of fun. This, I actually had some scraps of fiber left over from making some tags the other day and I put that in there and I really like the way that turned out too. There's a button in there as well. Um, so really, you can put all kinds of stuff. You can put beads, buttons, glitter. Um, oh, let me go grab my my glitter ones I just made, and I'll show you those. Let me pause this, and I'm gonna go grab those. Okay, I have my glitter ones here. Hopefully that shows up really well. And those pretty. Um, now, so this one was done in a silicone uh, candy mold. And um, it was very dull when it came out because of the texture of the silicone mold, so I glazed it with a Future Floor Wax and it made it nice and shiny and bright. Um, the ones that come out of the Casting Craft molds are pretty bright to begin with. I like this because it almost reminds me of candy corn. I'm going to do some candy corn ones um, next, I think, because I think that would be really fun. And some more of the hoops and a little butterfly. This one came out really dull because it was in one of the Martha Stewart molds and it has a very matte texture to it. You can see on the back, though, how it would look just, um, that can, I'm trying to catch a light here, just like, uh, cause like the back of the resin will be very shiny and bright because it's not against any mold. Um, so that shows you just how bright it is coming just right out of the resin. So those are really fun to make. I can't wait to turn those into some jewelry. So basically that's all I have to say about resin. Um, you know, you just have to compensate for any environmental conditions you have, such as, humidity and temperature by adding a little bit of uh, a few drops more of the catalyst if you have more humidity or if you have a cooler temperature or you need less if you have um if it's warmer and drier and you'll know because as you're working if you're if you're like in arizona and you're making these and your resin is getting like a hard gel almost like jello or gelatin it's like getting gelatinous minutes after you pour it then you probably need less catalyst because your environmental conditions are prime it's you know the, you get enough heat around you already to uh, cook that resin so 
you know, there is a little bit more learning curve to the polyester resin than the epoxy, but it's certainly worthwhile. And um, buying it at the big craft store, it was cheaper to get the polyester and it was a bigger amount, so I had more experimentation time and stuff to experiment with, so that's what I went with. But I did notice on like sites like uh, Blick Art Materials today, the epoxy resin was actually cheaper. Epoxy resin is a one-to-one -one mix and it's, I think, a little bit more designed for the smaller jewelry and a little bit easier to use. So, you know, you might want to go that route if you don't feel like experimenting. But, um, like, you can do the cool big paperweights with the polyester. You can embed things. You can make coasters. You can make um, all sorts of fun things. You can even put, like, candy and sprinkles and feathers and lots of stuff in your resin. So it's just a really fun medium. Um, when you're all done with a piece, sometimes you'll notice that you have... Um, I really, these, these, I've been good at pouring them so I can save myself work later, but sometimes you have some resin that spills over to the edge and you can use, you know, small files or sandpaper or emery boards to sand them down. Uh, just put on a dust mask or respirator if you're going to do that, if you're going to do a lot of it because you don't want to be breathing in um, all that resin dust. Uh, resin is very fumy, so you do want to take precautions and make sure you have a well-ventilated area. And I would do it without the kids and, and pets around, um, you know, better safe than sorry. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it's given you a little courage to try resin yourself. I was afraid of it, honestly, before I dived right in and started playing with it. Um, and I hope that this video has kind of helped you so you won't have any disappointing um, batches or mistakes. Or if you do, you'll know exactly why. So now, Stop researching it and do it because you can talk yourself out of doing so many projects when you go and read all the things that could go wrong. I think you know what could go wrong now and I think you know how to make it right. If it does go wrong, just try it. It's fun. You won't be disappointed. I thank you so much for watching this. If you found this video helpful, give me a thumbs up. Um, if you like my videos and you haven't done so already, please subscribe so you don't miss any more. And um, I will be doing some resin tutorials in the future so you can uh, make some of these fun projects that I've shown you here today. So thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye-bye.